The 2000s. The decade where we all started with terrible dial-up internet and ended with lightning fast internet sitting in our pockets. The decade that gave us YouTube, social media, and a million other reasons to be distracted. We also got a ton of great coasters over this decade. The coaster war that started in the late 90s carrying over to the early 2000s. And it was great pretending it was all sustainable until it wasn't. I pretty much started this decade graduating from junior high and ended the decade graduating from college. So as you can imagine, I rode a lot of coasters between 2000 and 2009, but also listened to a lot of music. Today, let's count down the 15 best 2000s coasters around the world and pair them with my 15 favorite songs from the decade. Before we get started, if you can drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, and give me a sub if you love coaster rankings. Also, some channel plugs. Airtime Thrills Raw Footage. Check this out if you have your own channel and need off-ride footage. Also, Home Run Productions. Check this out if you love baseball like I do. Number 15, Carpal Tunnel of Love by Fallout Boy, 2007, and Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds, 2000. Lake Compounds is a park that dates back to 1846, but at the turn of the century, they only had a few coasters. They surprised everyone when they hired CCI to build them a massive wooden coaster that rides along a hill, rising up 115 feet, hitting 60 miles an hour, covering over 4,700 feet of track, twisting among the trees, hidden from the rest of the park. And when it explodes off the mountain, it runs into a series of airtime hills before it hits the final breaks. This was on my bucket list for years, and it was a bit dicey, but I did get to ride this three times in 2018. I was very impressed with the layout, but I thought the forces were a bit overrated and it ran rough. Still, the layout and the setting defined the coaster, and that's the reason it won the golden ticket for best wooden coaster five times since it opened. Number 14, Beautiful Day by U2, 2000, and Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point, 2003. Cedar Point dominated the 2000s, and this one set all the records. It was the first full circuit coaster to top 400 feet. It was the first coaster to hit 120 miles an hour, and it used the hydraulic launch that Intamin just introduced the year prior. After climbing the 420-foot tower, it would have a vertical spiral back to the ground, doing all this with just lap bars. This dominated an already impressive Cedar Point skyline, and now that top hat is joined by another 400-foot tower, the new back spike on Top Thrill 2. We'll see how the renovated coaster compares to the classic. Number 13, Speed of Sound by Coldplay, 2005 and Millennium Force at Cedar Point, 2000. When this was announced in 1999, nobody had ever seen anything quite this impressive. Not only did it have the first ever 300 foot drop, it used the cable lift hill, rocketing that train to the sky, dropping right along Lake Erie, going into one of the longest courses ever designed, 6,595 feet, combining overbanks, airtime hills, and lower the ground moments. The ride is iconic, but for a lot of coaster enthusiasts, its layout and forces come up short, so it's not good enough to be in the top 10. This was Cedar Point's exclamation point on the coaster war, letting everyone know they were in it to win it. And even though they've taken the last two spots, as we go down this list, you can see they weren't done. Number 12, Fix You by Coldplay, 2005, and Maverick at Cedar Point, 2007. After the coaster war made everyone go bigger and faster, Cedar Point took another approach to their new coaster in 2007. Maverick would only stand 105 feet tall, but it would be loaded with intense low to the ground elements, starting with a 95 degree drop, sharp airtime hills, two inversions. Should have been three, but the Heartline roll was too intense. Has a powerful mid-course launch at 70 miles an hour, and covers 4,450 feet of track. This remains at the top of the list when it comes to the most popular rides at Cedar Point. If you love intensity, whip, and solid airtime, this ride's for you. It would just be better if it had lap bars. Some people would have this higher than I do, but if you look at the rest of the coasters on this list, it's absolutely loaded. Number 11, The Remedy by Jason Mraz, 2002, and Hades 360 at Mount Olympus, 2005. After CCI disbanded in 2002, their engineers came together to form the Gravity Group, and it's no surprise the park that had three CCIs gave them their first job, Mount Olympus. Hades stands 136 feet tall, has a first drop of 140 feet, and it drops right into a long tunnel spanning 800 feet. That's almost the length of a football field. Underneath the parking lot, into complete darkness, dipping and twisting the whole time, exploding out of the tunnel onto an island in the parking lot. Before 2013, this was a hill and then a turn, but now it has a corkscrew and an overbank, diving back into the tunnel to get back to the station. This ride is so long, 4,746 feet, and it's got so much airtime. It's just horribly rough, but I'd still ride it because it's amazing. Number 10, 
Here is Gone by the Goo Goo Dolls, 2002, and Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia, 2006. 2006 was the last hurrah when it came to ground up Six Flags coasters. Goliath, despite its generic name, was no generic hyper. It stood 200 feet, but only dropped down 170 feet. It's also no out and back hyper. It leaves the park, goes over the driveway to the parking lot, and rises into big camelbacks. Then it crushes you down to your seat with a downward helix. This ends with a series of small bunny hops, heading back to the park. Despite its size, its forces are brilliant, both positive and negative. It has an interesting layout, covering 4,480 feet of track, and even with its 170 foot drop, it's in the top tier of B&M hypers. Number 9, Lose Yourself by Eminem, 2002, and X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain, 2002. When this was announced in 2000, it didn't even seem real. We had never seen a coaster that rides on the side of the track. We had never seen seats that rotate on their own axis. And on top of all that, this would stand 175 feet tall with a 215 foot face first vertical drop. Having 3,610 feet of track where you ride on top and below, forward and backward, it's one of the most dynamic coaster experiences in the world, and it turned out to be Aerodynamics' final project. This was an engineering marvel, and with the help of SNS in 2008 to restore it, it rides on today as the most unique coaster experience in North America. Number 8. In the End by Lincoln Park, 2000, and Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England, 2000. Intamin was on a roll during the coaster wars, breaking all the records out there, but this one was something special. It wasn't the tallest, or fastest, or longest but it stood 208 feet tall, had a 221 foot drop into a tunnel, hit 77 miles an hour, and covered 5,400 feet of track. All that being said, it was the layout that made everyone turn their heads. For my money, this is the best layout on any coaster ever, a perfect mix of airtime and twister, and it's won the golden ticket for best steel coaster five times. It used to be called Superman Ride of Steel, was repainted and rethemed to Bizarro in 2009, and in 2016, they added VR, went back to its original color scheme, and changed it to what it is now, Superman the Ride. This opened with your classic Intamin T-Bars, but after an accident in 2004, they were modified, and in 2009, it got the famous Intamin U-Bricks, taking away some of the ride's glory. Number 7, Holiday by Green Day, 2004, and Colossus at Hyde Park, 2001. Speaking of Intamin, at the turn of the century, they came out with one of their greatest innovations ever, the prefabricated wooden track. This was wood that was laser cut in a factory, easy to assemble for the parks, and that cut down on the roughness from a wooden coaster that gets assembled on site. The first customer was Hyde Park in Germany, opening Colossus in 2001. This stands 164 feet tall, drops down 159 feet, hits 68 miles an hour, covers over 4,400 feet of track, an L-shaped layout full of airtime, and the Intamin prefab was officially a big hit. Over time, this had to undergo a three-year renovation process, reopening in 2019 as Colossus, Kampf der Giganten, new trains and new effects, and it was better than ever. Number 6, When You Were Young by The Killers, 2006, and Diamondback at Kings Island, 2009. Cedar Fair's first big investment to Kings Island, and they couldn't have done much better. This B&M Hyper stands 230 feet tall, drops 215 feet, maxes out at 80 miles an hour, and covers a mile of track. It goes out into the woods, featuring big camelbacks, elite airtime on all of them, and it ends with a bang, or really a splash. This brilliant spectacle putting the finishing touch on the ride. I've ridden a lot of B&M hypers, and this one's not the tallest or the longest, but it stands out as the best. It marked the beginning of a beautiful relationship between Cedar Fair and Kings Island. Number 5, Drops of Jupiter by Train, 2001, and Voyage at Holiday World, 2006. Mount Olympus gave the Gravity Group their first project, but it was another park with two CCIs that gave them their second, Holiday World. Raven and Legend were special rides, but this one would blow them out of the water. When it comes to wooden coaster layouts, it doesn't get much better than this. It starts with a 154 foot drop, going into big hills, then a low to the ground spaghetti bowl section. The whole time, you're climbing a hill. Then it slows down, rolls through the brakes, going into an underground triple down, and that kicks off the second half of the ride, careening through the woods back to the station ultimately covering 6,442 feet of track, and you're wondering how you're still carrying all that speed. That's the brilliance of this ride, using the first drop to get to the top of the hill, and using the hill as almost a second lift, doing this without the rider even realizing it. This ride is chaos, it has good pops of airtime, and it should be on your bucket list. Number 4, Sunday Morning by Maroon 5, 2002, an Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park, 2001. Intamin wasn't all about the record breakers in the 2000s, 
This mega coaster only stands 174 feet tall, barely passes the 4,000 foot mark, but it's one of the most praised coasters in the world. Holiday Park is a small park in Germany. At the time, it only had one coaster, that being the first ever coaster from Vekoma, Super Verbal, and they got this amazing airtime machine, starting with that twisted first drop and careening through a long layout of twists and airtime hills, using those classic Intamin T-bars. This is on my very short bucket list of European coasters. Number three, Big Yellow Taxi by Counting Crows, 2002, and El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure, 2006. Five years after Colossus, the Intamin prefab made its way to North America, and it did not disappoint. Just a year after opening the world's tallest and fastest coaster in King Ka, Great Adventure opened arguably the best coaster in the world, period. It uses a cable lift to bring the train up 181 feet, drops 171 feet at 76 degrees, an absolute elite airtime moment in the back row, then back-to-back -back camelbacks, some of the most fun you'll have on any elements on any coaster. Then it twists around, goes back under the lift hill, and tries to launch you into outer space with that rolling thunder hill, ending with rapid fire espens before hitting the brakes. The first time I rode this, I knew it was my number one, and it stayed there for 10 years. Number two, The Riddle by Five for Fighting, 2006, and T Express at Everland, 2008. El Toro was not the last of the Intamin prefabs. They had one more in store for us, and this one looks like the best one. Everland is a park in South Korea, and they got this beast combining the best of all the prefabs into one, starting with a 151 foot drop at 77 degrees, going into big camelbacks, and then using the second half for some quick airtime pops, emulating the layout of Baldur at Leesburg, the only prefab that missed this list. It covers a total of 5,384 feet of track. I've been fascinated by this ever since I saw it, and one day I hope to make this happen and see if it can top El Toro. It may not be as intense, but it's longer and has more airtime. Number one. Wonderful by Everclear, 2000, and Aisha Nika at Fuji Q Highland, 2006. After Aerodynamics went bankrupt, SNS bought their catalog. Their greatest gift to all of us was resurrecting the 4D model, and in 2006, they unveiled Aisha Nika at Japan's Fuji Q Highland. This is similar to X2, just way bigger and way more insane. It starts with a 249 foot drop. That's like going down Goliath's first drop at Magic Mountain and doing it face first. I can't even imagine. It whips through 3,783 feet of track, using elements very similar to X2, but the one that fascinates me is the zero-g roll. X2 doesn't have anything that inverts all the way around, and this looks like one of the most insane elements in the world. I've never ridden this, but if you ask the people who have, a lot of them will say this is their overall number one. I don't know if it would end up there for me, but I have to respect its place in the industry, so it tops this list. That's all I have for now. Let me know what your favorite coaster is from the 2000s, and also some of your favorite songs from the decade. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and give me a sub if you want to see more like this. I have a playlist with other decades in this series. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.